Luke, I am your father. Hey everyone, this is Digital Charcuterie. My name is James. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. I love to talk Star Wars here and on my other channel, the Rebel Scum Podcast, where we talk about it in long form. Yesterday, news came out that Disney had pulled its December 2026 Star Wars film. No! From its slate and replaced it with an Ice Age movie, to which I say... Bravo. I've said on this channel and the other channel many, many a times that I would love to go to the theater to watch a Star Wars movie. It's awesome. I like going with my family. I like going with my friends. We have a good time. Whether the movie's good, whether the movie's bad, it's about going there and the experience of being in the theater, sitting down, having some popcorn, listening to John Williams' fantastic score, and seeing some lightsabers in action. And that's what we go for, and that's usually what we get, except for Rogue One. Actually, Rogue One has some lightsabers at the very end, so you get a pass. Rogue One's fantastic. I'm not going to lie. But they went every year for five straight years with a movie, right? Force Awakens, Rogue One, Last Jedi, Solo, and The Rise of Skywalker. I saw all of them in the theater. Opening night, we got our tickets early. You had to buy them two months in advance because that's what you do now. And I went and I got my tickets and I went with my family and my friends. And we sat and we had a whole row, two rows, whatever it was. And we watched these movies. And they were a good time, bad time, whatever. We had talked about it. We had, you know, we made a day out of it. We had a good time. But you realize... At some point, it's got to end, right? Disney said, for the foreseeable future, there will be a new Star Wars movie every year. And then the minute they started to slow down, they pulled that and they, they changed their tune on that. And, you know, looking back, you're like, well, I, I liked going to the movie every December to see it, to see a, a Star Wars movie. And I did, and I really, really did. But at the same time, I also really liked the George Lucas approach of every three years. Now, maybe you can get away with every two years, but I liked it. It wasn't just because... It gave him time to make the movie, to create the movie that he wanted to make and all that. It was because in three years' time, I had The Phantom Menace. I went from high school to Attack of the Clones College. I went from, like, you know, a child to an older child in college. Probably one with more alcohol in my system. But you, grow, you, 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 know, you age in three years. As you get older, three years isn't as much time as it is when you're younger, I know. But, but at the time, you know, three years of talking of speculating, of building excitement, of getting title reveals, of getting name reveals, of getting little plot details here and there, of having interviews with George Lucas, how he's writing this script on his yellow notepad. There were three years of buildup and anticipation and excitement. And looking back on it, you know, it was fun going from The Force Awakens to The Last Jedi was a lot of fun. But it was a year. And we had Rogue One in the middle there that kind of like, you know, it stopped you for a, for a short period of time. I mean, it was very, I love Rogue One, but it would stop you for a short period of time for me excited about The Last Jedi. Then The Last Jedi came, and you had a, only a year or two years in between. And it's like, okay, the, you know, the two years was fine, but then you cut it off at the legs with another movie. And so I'm kind of okay and happy that they got rid of this December 2026 for that reason, but also because now whatever movie was, you know, going to be in that slot, which was probably one of the 4,000 Ray movies. But now whatever movie they're going to make, they can take their time and do it properly. I don't think the original Ray movie that they announced at Star Wars Celebration is going to happen. I thought the director was going to be gone. I still think that's going to be the case. But I think that movie is shelved. I think Kinberg is where they're going now. At first, the Deadline article said it wasn't going to be Ray. Maybe it wouldn't be Ray. Who knows if it's Ray? But now you got to suspect it's going to be Ray. If this whole, If Hollywood Reporter was correct, there's a whole lot of infighting going on at Lucasfilm over who can use Ray, and they're trying to race to get Ray to the screen first. And I say, slow the race down, right? The tortoise won against the hare. Slow down. Get a good movie. Right now, there's probably seven comments right now in this video saying that Ray sucks. Ray killed it. Restart Star Wars. Disney ruined Star Wars. Ray is the worst thing to happen in Star Wars. So you got to give it time. You have to make sure that your Ray story is pitch perfect. Pitch perfect. I believe they can do that based on the backstory of Ray. There's enough there that they can flesh out with the right writer with some care and give us a good Ray story. I really believe that. Now, they can prove me wrong, and I'll come out here and be like, I was proved wrong, but I'm hoping they'll prove me right. I'm hoping that Kinberg or whoever it is, I'm hoping that they have the know how to make a very good, very strong Ray movie. So I'm glad that we're getting one movie in 2026 because I love waiting. There's an anticipation. Now I get to go and I get to watch Mandalorian and Grogu in the theater in May. And then I get to wait, you know, whatever, six months 
and it'll be on Disney Plus sometime between you know September and December, Christmas time, and I'll get to watch on Disney Plus. Then they might release it on physical, hopefully get that around Christmas time, own the physical copy of Mandalorian and Grogu, or own it on digital, whatever, however you do it, but I'll have it there, and I'll be able to watch it. I'll get to watch all the behind the scenes stuff, and I'll get to really, really indulge in Star Wars again. And not be worried about the next Star Wars. And Marvel was Marvel was really good at here's a movie, here's a movie, here's a movie. Whatever you think of Marvel now, that's fine. But it was great then. But with Star Wars, it's very different. Star Wars isn't Marvel. It's very different. We should take it all in. If you look at the lore of Star Wars, we should be taking everything in. We should be analyzing everything. We should be enjoying it to the nth degree. Right? We should be doing podcasts on it, YouTube videos on it, all these like little fun posts about it, making the memes. What about the droid attack on the Wookiees? That's like Star Wars, it's a weird franchise because it had three movies for 20 years and then it had six movies and now we're at 11 movies in a shorter period of time. But it, like, it's not like everything else. It's its own unique beast and I think you have to let it sit and marinate and allow the fans to come in and enjoy it and see what you're doing and appreciate what you're doing and then build on the lore. And, the, and then you can earn the fans' respect and appreciation. And I think part of the problem with how they handled Luke, and I wasn't, look, I didn't have a problem with the way they handled Luke. I thought it was lazy, to be honest. Like, I just thought it was a lazy route. Like, I will make him depressed. You're like, okay. To me, that's lazy, and people were mad because of this and that, and then people liked it because that's how he would be, and, and wh whatever your thought is. they I think at that point, the new regime, the Disney era, hadn't earned doing that with Luke's character yet, in the eyes of the fandom. I think if George Lucas did that, people would have been upset, but it would have had a different vibe around it. And don't argue. People were upset with George Lucas for everything he did in the prequels. They would have been upset with that. But there would have been a different vibe because it would have been, well, he created this character. He can do whatever he wants. Like, I remember when The Force Awakens was coming out and people were speculating that Luke might be the villain. The villain. There was people thinking that Luke might be Kylo Ren, as dumb as that was. That was an actual theory out there. But it was fun leading into it. And we need that again. I love that Mando and Grogu is going to come out in 2026. And we have two years now or a year and a half to look at it, to speculate, to talk about, to discuss what this could be. And then the next movie might be 2027 or whatever it is. But give us time. Give us some breathing room. We've got all we can handle on Disney Plus right now. For better or worse, we're getting Star Wars material there. We don't need it force-fed to us in the movie theater. You've got to make these movies count also. If the movies are just what... You know, if we go to see a Star Wars movie and it doesn't feel like anything more special than what we got on Disney+, Plus. then why would fans or casual fans continue to go see it? I think diehard fans like me, and like probably most of you watching this video, would go to see it. But a casual fan was going to sit there and say, why am I going to do this? And I say this a lot in the videos, but this is how I feel. Rogue Squadron made me feel that way. Like, why would a casual fan want to go see Rogue Squadron when they got Mandalorian on their TV set? Like, what differentiates it from that? And that's what it has to be. And I think, you know, I don't want to say it's got to be the stakes have to be higher, but it has to feel something epic. Like Lord of the Rings, right? Like, we got to destroy this one ring. That's the journey. And you can make the TV show whatever you want to make, but the, the, the movie has to be about, the movies have to be about something great. But they have to sit in the damn room and come up with what Star Wars is. And right now, based on The Hollywood Reporter, they can't even figure that out. They don't know what meanings are. They don't know this and that. They need somebody. Somebody needs to just be appointed at Lucasfilm as the head of Star Wars. And like you, everything Star Wars goes through you. And the problem is the difference between Marvel and Star Wars. And people, look, Kathleen Kennedy said this and people fought her on it. I think she worded it weird. But, but basically what's hap happening is Marvel has all these comics and comic storylines that they can feed from. But Star Wars, okay, Star Wars has the legend stuff, the EU stuff, fine. But that's not really George Lucas's Star Wars. He never considered that stuff canon. They were just ideas that people wrote and he agreed and he accepted. Star Wars doesn't have an overseer. Marvel has all their storylines in their books and comics and whatever. But Star Wars always just had George Lucas and what George Lucas said. And now George Lucas is gone and they don't know what to do. And they're not going to call George Lucas because that's just not what they're going to do. That business is business and that's not how it's going to work. But I think someone should. <laughs> that's what I think someone should just call George Lucas and be like, hey, 
can you figure this out? And I said this on Rebel Scum Podcast last week. They need to make a Star Wars Bible. You adhere to that Bible. You build your stories around that Bible. And that's how you go. And that's how you make it. I think Stranger Things has a Stranger Things Bible. And they're the same people that write them all. And they have their own Bible. So I think Star Wars needs to make a Bible. And like, this is it. If you contradict it, you're out. You can't do that. This is the Bible. Stick to it. And that's it. But again, they've moved a movie out of here that they never should have announced or put on their slate to begin with. They jump, they're always jumping ahead and then they're reacting to everything that comes their way and they need to just have their Bible, stick to their guns and do it. And either fans are going to like it or they're going to hate it, but at least it'll be something genuine and honest on their part, which I think is what fans would really appreciate at this point instead of just, you know, it being a corporate entity that I think a lot of fans feel like Star Wars has devolved into. So those are my thoughts on it. I am a Star Wars fan for life. I was born into it. It is what it is. Thanks everybody for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may the force of others be with you.